when did Joe get cancer, Michael? Joe has been, we, we are this year, I think this is year number three since his diagnosis of prostate cancer. And, uh, and again, he's not getting the treatment that he needs currently, uh, you know, without, he's not getting any, any proper nutrition. And, you know, my, my fear is as a result of those things, regardless of a pardon or not, Joe's life is going to be cut short because of just a lack of care, you know, a lack of resources because in the, in the American prison system, which I know this is true. I mean, they're worse prison systems for sure, but it's like human trafficking. I mean, they've got him in there. The longer they keep him in there, they make money. You know, whoever's running the prison makes money off of Joe. And if they don't have to spend that money to take care of Joe, they get to put more in their pockets. And so there's just this gross negligence and lack of care for humankind. And listen, criminals are criminals. And even if Joe was a true criminal, it doesn't take away his humanity. You know, and it doesn't take away the accountability or responsibility that we're, you know, short of, you know, an execution and a a death sentence, you are still tasked with the responsibility to care for the basic human needs. And even Joe right now, nobody's taking care of the basic human needs. You know, he's, he's locked in a small six foot concrete cell with no interaction with people. And in the United States prison system, when you're in solitary confinement, the only contact you can have with another human being is to have your shackles put on or taken off. Um, or if you have a medical emergency, the guards are not allowed to touch you. So you got to think about this from a human, human nature standpoint, like regardless of your connection to somebody else, the human touch by another human just reminds your soul you're alive, right? So when you put somebody in a, in a complete deprivation of not even getting a handshake or a touch on the shoulder, of being locked away without any stimulation, no reading material, no listening, nothing to keep your mental stimulation up, no proper nutrition, not the ability to bathe or to you know, execute basic hygiene, you are literally driving someone to the edge of being completely broken, mental insanity, emotional breaking, and and ultimately physically. Because when we start to lose ourselves emotionally and and mentally, our physical pays the price because all of those things come out in the way our bodies react, right? So what they've done to Joe, I mean, they're essentially, I mean, they're essentially kind of a, it's, it's like waterboarding. It's like this place where they basically put him to say, we're going to slowly torture you till you die. And we don't care about the outcome because he's, t- and, and, and sadly, this is true. And again, I've got good friends who have been in prison. I have good friends who are currently in prison and some of them for some pretty atrocious crimes. I mean, I'm, I've actually become friends with some notorious serial killers because I had a, I had a real curiosity of how does the human nature of somebody, regardless of the level of their crime, like what happens to that person? Because they're still a human being, still breathing. Like how do you maintain any sense of humanity? And whether they're entitled to dignity or not, I don't know. 